Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 24 of Revelation chapter 3. And we're going to be reading in verse 10 of Revelation 3, which says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And we were looking at this in our last study, and we we uh, saw how uh, this has to be referring to the Great Tribulation period. That uh, when when God is saying here that he will keep thee from the hour of temptation or the hour of testing and trial, that will come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That we have two um, big helpful clues that, that let us know that the season that's in view is the Great Tribulation. And the first is the word hour, which identifies with the Great Tribulation. In Revelation 17 and in Revelation chapter 18, God speaks of uh, one hour concerning the judgment that comes upon Babylon at the end of that hour. And he is likening the Great Tribulation to uh, one final hour. He also does this in the parable of the man, the husbandman, who sends workers into his fields and he sends them at various points in the day. And and then at the last hour, the 11th hour, he finds people idle and he sends them to work. It's the last hour of the work day in his field. And then at the end of that hour, he comes and gives everyone their wage. And in that last hour, the 11th to the 12th hour, is a picture of the one hour of great tribulation and there was work to be done. God utilized his people to send forth the gospel into the world like never before. And he did move in them to accomplish his purpose in order that the word of God reach all the nooks and crannies of the earth. And it did in a a historical, unprecedented way God sounded the trumpet. He he blasted the information of May 21, 2011, Judgment Day, to all the world, and he found his lost sheep. All of the elect heard, and through the hearing of the word of God, they were saved. And that happened in the last hour. And then, at, at, in that parable, comes evening, comes the nighttime. And, and that's what happened at the end of the hour of the Great Tribulation. Spiritually, the sun is darkened, the moon does not give its light, and so forth. It, it's a, a deep darkness, spiritually, that has descended upon the earth. And we are in nighttime, the time in which Jesus said, if you remember in the Gospel of John, are there not 12 hours in the day? And then he encouraged people to work while it is day, 12 hours, just as in that parable that he gave, a 12-hour workday. And then he says, the night comes when no man can work, and he is the man that will do no further work of saving at the end of the workday, the 12-hour day, at the end of that last hour, the, the Great Tribulation period. And, and, and so this uh, reference here, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, is referring to the Great Tribulation. We, we have one bit of evidence there. Now, the second thing which confirms this is the next statement, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So what is going to happen in that hour of temptation or testing, is going to come upon all the world, and it will try 
everyone that dwells upon the earth. Now, when we think about it, we realize that that also matches very well perfectly with the Great Tribulation. First of all, God began the Great Tribulation with judgment upon his people, upon the New Testament churches and congregations. And he opened up at the beginning of the Great Tribulation the scriptures that had been sealed up until the time of the end. And slowly, according to God's timetable, he began to reveal truth over the course of the 23-year Great Tribulation period. And one of the truths that the Lord uncovered and uh, put forth before his people and gave them understanding concerning was the end of the church age. It was the church age since 33 AD, but now at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, the year 1988, 1955 years later, God ended the church age and he also commanded his people to come out of the churches and congregations because the Holy Spirit came out of the midst and were to follow God. But we're, obviously, we're not to remain in a place, in a situation where he is not. And uh, just to uh, let us know how serious a matter it was, he also revealed that he had loosed Satan and had permitted Satan to enter in to the churches. It, it was a transaction. The Holy Spirit came out of the midst and the spirit of the evil one entered in. And the Bible uses the language that he took his seat, that is, began to rule as the man of sin in the temple, showing himself that he is God. Now, no true believer would ever want to remain in those circumstances. And, and so, for our own good, our own benefit, God commanded his people to come out of the church, to flee, depart out. And, and go out into the world, no longer attend church. Well, this information was spread far and wide, as the Lord made sure of that. And those within the churches and congregations heard it. They heard about it, but they did not believe it. They did not listen or hearken to the word of God. And this information that God opened up, therefore, operated as a trial. It was a severe test to all those within the churches of the world who profess to be his people. All right, very well. Here is my commandment. This is my will for you, all Christians everywhere. This was not just a commandment to certain ones. This was a commandment to everyone who name the name of Christ, to popes and bishops and priests and ministers and elders and deacons and individual members of the congregation, to each and every one. Individually, personally, God commanded, come out of her, depart out of the church. And, and therefore, God tested uh, the whole corporate church, which numbered close to two billion people during the time of the Great Tribulation. So we can see why God here in this verse is saying that first he speaks to the true believers, since they are the ones that kept the word of his patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. God will make sure that his people do um, pass the test. In other words, um, they will be moved by the Lord's Spirit to do his will, to accomplish his purpose. And, and that would mean to come out of the church. And, and yet he goes on to say, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And we see about two billion in the churches were tried in a major way throughout that period of the Great Tribulation, throughout the hour of temptation. Oh, but hold it. Someone might say, okay, yes, 
Um, I understand how the churches were trying, but this says in this verse, it will come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That's not just saying those in the church. That's saying everyone, all of mankind, even those outside of the churches and congregations, they were to be tried too. Now, how do you explain that? Well, it so happens that God opened up information like the end of the church age, which was a particular trial to profess Christians everywhere, no matter where they were located. But he also additionally opened up information from the Bible during the hour of the Great Tribulation in which he brought forth a date, a time for the very day of judgment. And, and of course, we know this date is May 21, 2011. It's very familiar to the world now when they hear that particular date. And that's because God made sure that this particular date, unlike any other date in all of human history, I think we can safely say that, that this date, and it's why we continually are repeating it, because it comes forth from the Bible. God's the one that locked in this date and no other in this manner. And, and he made a point of sending the news of this date to all the nations of the world so that they heard on May 21 of 2011 Judgment Day would take place. Now we just don't have any other record concerning a date coming forth from the Bible in which all the world is warned in advance and told of it in the way that this date was. Well, we, we could say that much of the world recognizes a date such as December 25th as Christmas, but of course, not all the world does. And even that date is not the actual date of the birth of Christ, but it's just a date that, that was settled upon. And well, anyway, this date of May 21, 2011 is unprecedented, unparalleled, in human history that at such a time was put forth into the forefront of the world's eyes so that they could not turn away they couldn't turn left they couldn't turn right it it was everywhere on billboards uh, they would turn a street corner and someone would hand them a track if they turned on their television at some point, as we got closer, it, it, they would see a news report. And, and it, it was all over the Internet. People were wearing T-shirts. And uh, many, many people were discussing it. The world was buzzing about this particular date like never before. And, and God used all these things to spread this information so that everyone would hear... And this resulted in a severe trial for all the people of the earth. For all the, the great many people that heard this report of the approaching day of judgment. They now were faced with a, a similar situation as those in the churches. Those in the churches heard God's judgment is upon you. You must get out in order to be obedient, in order to be even considered a wheat. You must leave the church. If you remain, you'll certainly be a tear and be bundled for the fire. And, and so those in the churches had to deal with those kinds of bits of information. Those outside of the churches during this hour of temptation that came upon all the earth to try all them that dwell upon it, they had to face uh, the information that a particular date was Judgment Day. And this, of course, revealed to them that there is a judge who is God, 
that they are sinners and therefore worthy of being judged, deserving of being judged, and that they would be destroyed and judgment would fall upon them. Yet the implication was that God is merciful. It just, uh, you know, uh, it did not really need to be said. The fact that God was forewarning the world implied that he was a merciful God, just as when Jonah went into Nineveh and, and God dictated to Jonah exactly what he was to say. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That was it. It was a timeline. And you had from the point that you hear this until that point, And then there will be an overthrowing, a judgment. And the people of Nineveh from the king on down, when they heard that news, they immediately began to sit in sackcloth and ashes and and to refrain from eating and drinking and to cry mightily unto God. For who can tell if God will turn and repent and not bring that destruction upon their city and upon their people they understood they they realized why would god even bother to forewarn them unless he he was a gracious and merciful god and and might turn away his wrath well likewise all that heard the message of judgment day coming on that date realized well god is merciful god is gracious Maybe God will have mercy upon me. Maybe uh, he will spare me this judgment. And, and, and so this was the situation that the world found themselves in. Will they humble themselves? Will they, will they go lowly before God? Will they go to his throne of grace for the first time in their life? Will they go brokenhearted to him? And cry out to him, O oh God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. I deserve your wrath. Or will, will they fail the test? And will they ridicule it and dismiss it and just write it off and try to ignore it as much as possible? And of course, uh, only God's elect are the ones that pass that test because God saved them. And God is the one that drew those individuals to himself. All the rest of the world failed the test. And they were put to the trial and they failed. They they did not pass that test. Just like all those that remained in the churches and congregations failed the test. And they uh, ended up as the tares bundled for the burning. So here God says, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And, and this uh, only fits it. The only thing that qualifies as matching up with the information in this verse is the period of the great tribulation. OK, let's go on to verse 11. In Revelation chapter 3, and it says here in uh, Revelation 3, verse 11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And again, we, we've seen several times as we've studied the book of Revelation up until this point that the Lord will make a statement and then restated he'll say it again he'll emphasize a particular truth and he's doing that here behold i come quickly back in revelation chapter 2 we read in verse 5 remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent and this uh, was a warning to the churches. You you have to return to your first love to keep my commandments. That's what love is. If you love me, keep my commandments. You must maintain faithfulness. You must continue to 
hold fast to the word of God and not depart from it. If you do, I will come quickly and remove my candlestick out of its place. And that would be the light of the gospel. And so the Lord gave that warning to that particular church. And that did have some application to particular individual congregations. But it was a greater warning to all the churches if they did not remain steadfast in the true gospel and abide in the doctrine of Christ, then Christ would depart. He would leave them in darkness. And that's what happened finally after nearly 2,000 years when the church age ended. And, and again, we have to remind ourselves that when God says, I come quickly, and then we see that the fulfillment of a prophecy like that does not take place for nearly 2,000 years, we have to keep in mind that what God means is he will come at the first possible opportunity. That is, he has a certain um, timetable. He, he has a schedule according to work out his times and seasons. And he had a period in place for the church age, the 1955 years. Once that space of time elapsed, then he will come to visit and see how the churches are conducting themselves in relationship to his word. And, and he did so. And then when he sees their errors and their faults and their other kinds of doctrines and gospels, he immediately comes in judgment. He removes the Holy Spirit, putting out the light of the gospel in all churches everywhere in the world instantaneously at once. And he brings his judgment upon them. Likewise, God had a plan for judging the world and he comes quickly. Here we find that verse 10 was talking about the hour of temptation and that is the great tribulation. And following the great tribulation, what does the Bible say in Matthew 24, 29? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and so forth. That is, at first available instant, at the first moment that God's overall program of time allows, in this case, the judgment on the churches had to unfold. It, it had to take place over the 23-year period in which God also, the last about 17 years, poured out the latter rain to save a great multitude. But once that um, part of the plan of God, his salvation plan and judgment on the church plan ended, then immediately God comes quickly. He transitions to the day of judgment for all the world. Well, we can learn that from this language. Behold, I come quickly. And then it says, hold that fast which thou hast. And this statement is reminding us to hold tightly, hold securely, uh, uh, cleave without separation to the truths of the Bible. And, and, you know, uh, we must do this today. The, the truths that God graciously and kindly opened up uh, during the period of great tribulation, truths that were hidden and covered for centuries and never previously known. We are the ones privileged to have received these things. We're the recipients of these gracious truths, the, these gracious understandings that God has granted us concerning his word that people have never known before because it was not God's plan that they know them. We are therefore stewards of the mysteries of the gospel as the mysteries of the word of God have to do with those things that are hidden. And as a steward, we must be found faithful we have responsibility and an obligation before God 
to maintain and hold fast to these things because no one else will. Will the world hold fast to the truths that God opened up during the Great Tribulation period? Of course not. They, they don't uh, even know them. They don't want to know them. And they're ignorant of them. Will the church of our day hold fast to these things? Well, obviously not. They, they despise these things. They cannot stand the information that God has unearthed from his word because the teachings that God has brought forth to the light condemn the churches. The end of the church age is a prime example. Other teachings show that the things the churches are teaching are false and and they want no part of that they want to continue holding on to their traditions and and their reformed doctrines and 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 so forth and so who is going to continue to hold fast to the information that the lord has opened up And so we continue to study and we continue to share truth with others concerning the end of the church age or concerning the date that the Bible locked in is the day of judgment or concerning annihilation or concerning that the Lord Jesus was slain uh, as a lamb from the foundation of the world and made payment at that point or whatever it might be. That is what we must hold fast to. And, and we, we do not deny these things. We do not try to distance ourselves from them as though they're offensive to us in some way. No, we, we're thankful to God. We're very thankful that he has so graciously revealed them to us.